Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here with another review. I recently just got done watching the film Beyond Skyline, and I gotta say, I actually enjoyed it. It is a B-movie from start to finish. It's a pretty good B-movie. I'd give it three and a half stars for what this film is, which is, well, like I've said, a B-movie. It's a pretty good one. The first Skyline movie, when it came out, he got noted for having good special effects. I think it was directed by the Strauss brothers, who, who also did Alien vs. Predator Requiem, which was a terrible film. Uh, I actually like the original Skyline. A lot of people hate it. It has like a 4 something out of 10 on IMDb. I think it's a little unfair. It's not a great movie, but for a B movie, I think it's a perfectly good watchable B movie. Uh, this one is a better film. This is a better film and a better B movie. It's more silly than the first film, but it's more fun at the same time. Pretty much you got Frank Grillo, who is a great actor, great like action star actor. Uh, he was wasting in Captain America Civil War, even though I like that movie, he should have been way more than that. Frank Grillo is awesome here, he plays a cop basically, and you get the relationship between him and his son. There's not a lot of character development here, but we get enough for a B movie. Uh, some of the acting is a little passable, and some of the lesser characters are not as good. <clears throat> but, but this film is mostly entertaining, which is what saves it for me. Uh, Frank Grillo and his son had kind of have a strange, strange relationship since their since uh, Frank Grillo's wife died, who was the kid's mother, and you get the idea the kid is like going around causing trouble and he's falling over the wrong crowd. Pretty much, the movie interconnects with the first film and it's kind of happening at the same time for a lot of it. And uh, the aliens attack and they're trapped under the subway. And, uh, did you get some cool, fun action here where Frank Grillo is like shotguns one of the aliens to death, which is pretty awesome. And then it grabs his leg and it takes a flare and just throws it into its head and it blows up. Uh, along with a vehicle. He doesn't throw it into the alien's head. He puts it like in the car or whatever and the vehicle and everything blows up with it. Like I said, this is a big movie. Uh, problems with the film was Frank Grillo ends up getting abducted and put on the alien ship with his son. He tries to save his son. You get the same two characters from the original film. Uh, if you remember the original movie, it ended with two survivors basically and one dude gets his brain put inside of uh, one of the aliens and, but he's able to control it. And uh, he teams up with them to try to save the dude's pregnant wife. The guy's pregnant wife dies, but the baby is still alive. It's not the same actress from the last movie. I have no idea why they couldn't get the same actress. But, uh, yeah, one other thing I didn't like is that a lot of the movie starts taking place on the ship, and the movie starts lagging once it gets on the spaceship. But you still get some kind of cool action. I, once again, I don't like how they didn't bring back the actors from the first film. This film also tries to capture, like, the overseas market with, like, Asia and Indonesia or whatever and everything. Uh, by casting a lot of well-known action, like Asian stars and stuff, and they even recast the girl from the first film as like an Asian actress, I believe. Uh, and she's not as good as an actor. And I, I love when movies go multi, like uh, racial or uh, yeah, multi-ethnic, whatever, and cast people from different ethnicities. That's cool. But here in this film, it does it does feel like they're trying to cater to like the Asian market and everything, which is like the second biggest film market other than the U.S., I think. And I understand that from a business point of view, but at the same time, it is really noticeable here. You even get the guy from The Raid is in this movie, I believe. But anyway, um, once they get to, like, Thailand or whatever, the film starts to pick up. Uh, it, becomes, it becomes more of a B-movie, though, so you start getting, like, these over-the-top kung fu moves. But that's, uh, but it's still fun. It's still fun. Uh, they get to that place, basically, and they're kung fu fighting with the aliens, and they're trying to protect the, the main character, Frank Grillo, the cop, is trying to protect the, the child of the couple from the first film, and it's, like, growing, she's growing at, like, exponential rate, and faster than normal, um, and, uh, he tries to protect her, the alien guy from the last film, who, well, who's an, who's an alien now, because he had his brain put in one, he blows himself up with the, uh, ship, the guy's son gets put inside of an alien's body, just like the dude from the first film, and he starts helping him out, at pretty much at the end of the movie, he goes inside of a big giant robot, his son does, who is an alien now, and he fights the evil alien, and takes him out, and they re use the, uh, kid's blood, which, uh, her brain, because she's from the mother or whatever, and who was also infected by the blue light, she has, like, the, uh, a, um, a blood type that has been created since she's kind of like a hybrid that makes her immune to the blue lights and they take some of her blood, put it in a weapon and launch it into the aliens or whatever and it changes all the aliens and gives their minds back, gives them their human human minds back. So basically now you got a bunch of people who have uh, their, their consciousness back and they're inside alien battle droids and they're now joining the humans and they whoop the aliens asses at the end of it. Unlike the first film, this film ends pretty triumphantly. The aliens pretty much have their asses kicked at the end and Frank Grillo survives. Um, 
And uh, the movie ends with them like flying towards space with the girl now an adult, and they're going to take the fight to the aliens in outer space. It sets up for a third film. Really, you don't have to have a third film. This film ends in a way to where it can be conclusive, but you don't have to. But you could have a third film if you wanted, but you don't necessarily have to have it because this film pretty much does wrap the story up good enough. But anyway, all in all, this is a pretty good B flick. It is a B flick. If you're watching the film and you see the people start doing kung fu against the aliens and beating them up, even if the action's good, and you st but you still think it's silly, this is probably not the film for you if you can't get into that kind of stuff. But for me personally, the special effects are good. The actors are mostly fine for this level of film. You can't go into a movie like this expecting uh, The Arrival by the dude who did Blade Runner 2049. This is a B movie. It's not going to be anything more than a B movie. And for that, it's a pretty good... B-movie alien invasion flick, which is exactly what I thought of the first one, except this one's more enjoyable because there's more action and fun to this one. Whereas the first one's mostly just people caught or uh, uh, stuck in an apartment building. But anyway, all in all, that's my review for Beyond Skyline. I would watch this again before Jigsaw. I'll see you guys again with the next review.